them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word this morning. Hallelujah. Here today. This prophecy here in, in chapter 35 was applied uh, uh, to the restoration of the Jews while they were in Babylon. Seventy years that they were uh, in captivity. And uh, I started to use the word exile, but exile is not the right word there. Uh, you can be exiled from your country <laughs> or even run out of your state and uh, not be a captive. But these right. people were not exiled. They were captive. Right. They couldn't come and go, you know, as they, as they pleased. Uh, uh, they were there because they were prisoners of war. Cool. And... Uh, and yet amidst all of these promises, they had fears. Right. Right. And uh, I think that's where a lot of us live, is in our fears. Yeah. Right. Can you help me preach this morning? Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm just talking, just ordinary everyday talk to us, you know. Uh, these cancer growths that gets on your skin runs in my family. My youngest brother had a big one cut off his face. Dad's had several burn on his hands and face. And my sister Marcia here has to deal with them. And uh, sometimes I can, you know, I know more hair than I've got. I don't use a blow dryer. I just get out of the shower and get a towel and just press it up, you know. And, and uh, Esther said, you're going to keep doing that, you're going to rub what you got off. And, uh, but sometimes I can, I can rub too hard with that towel and my face will break loose and bleed, you know. Fear. Maybe I've got something like that, you know. But other times, uh, 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 I have fear hit me over this and fear hit me over that. And I've got the promises of the Word of God. Amen. And I've got promises that God has given me personally. Right. That either he spoke to me or let me see it in a dream or a vision, the end result of it. And yet I still have fears. Well, you too. You too. Well, amen. I feel like talking to us. I feel praise to God. Amen. But there's a consolation set before us in spite of all this fearful hesitation that God is with us, that God's helping us. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's going to be a brighter day. Right. I, I, you know, uh, uh, it can't get any worse than this. Well, it probably could, but thank God it's not. Right. Hallelujah. Come on. A lot of times when we think things can't get any worse, we haven't seen the worst yet. <laughs> then when we really need to thank God for his guiding hand, for his protecting hand, hallelujah. But these people who have a fearful heart, they just didn't know what to do. The prophecy that had already been given to Jeremiah was telling them, that, that they would get out of there in time. Come on, they had the prophecy that they could read. They had Jeremiah's writings. Right. They might not have had them uh, uh, and, and, uh, reprinted and reprinted again because they didn't have the way to print it. They probably didn't have it too many copies of it, but they had access to Jeremiah's, Jeremiah's prophecy. Right. Amen. And they had access to know that in, in, in the right amount of time, when it comes to pass, they was coming out of there. Right. Amen. And yet they were having this fearful hesitation. Amen. And, 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 and today we've got this fearful hesitation. 
I don't know what to do next. But can I tell you, I don't know what to do next in some of my situations either. Right. But said we just wait. Right. And then I have a promise in waiting. Come on. Come on. I don't know what to do next, but I've got a promise just simply by waiting. Right. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right. Not only will I renew my strength, but mount upon wings as eagles. Right. Yeah. I may not quote it like it is, but I won't take anything away from it. But if I wait, I can run and not be weary. I can walk and not faint. Hallelujah. And then we're told in the New Testament, be not weary and well doing. We'll reap in due season if we faint not. Amen. And then the first situation arises, we're wringing our hands and we're scared to death. And I know some people don't like me to use that, but I'm telling you, I, I, I get scared to death almost literally that we're not going to be able to handle our situation. And we're not handling it anyway. God is. He's in control of it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Just a minute, is Jamie still going to church? Amen. But the thing about it, you know, she was so tore up, Sister Minnie was, about him moving, moving to another location. But while he was here, he didn't want to even talk about church. But he gets moved. And the burden gets on him so bad, finally he goes. Right. And whether or not he's going back or not, he dumped it all over to God that day. Right. Right. I'm telling you, you got to have a beginning, don't you? Right. Right. you got to have a place to start. That's right. Yeah. Well, you help us in here? I, I just look back and saw her. You know, and, and, and sure, sure, she's just like everybody else. When your children are grown and, and they won't listen to everything you tell them, because we done been through some things. Come on. Amen. There's times that we've wasted our substance when we shouldn't have. Times that we've spent it on things that we shouldn't, when, you know, when we should not have. And we can see our children going right through making the same mistakes, and we try to warn them, they won't listen to us. Amen. We get all concerned. And, and, and then they get moving around, this, that, and the other. And, and, and we don't know what to do. Our hearts get fearful. Amen. But God's still in control of everything. He's right. still in control of your problem. Right. Hallelujah. See what it is. I, 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 we, we get a, 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 a just a mixed up view of who God really is. You know... I don't want to sin to come short of his glory. I really don't want to get God troubled at me. I don't want to get God angry at where I fall in his judgment. Right, right. Come on, I don't want to get God so angry that I fall under his discipline rod. I told Sister Esther the other day, you know, she gets concerned about uh, 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 me working every day and and uh, sure I get tired. No, no, I can't keep up with the young men at my age. But I'm telling you, I do know it. But she gets concerned. She gets concerned. And uh, I told her the other day, I said, if what we're going through, Sister Kathy, is under the disciplined hand of God, and let me go under his discipline rod without complaining. Right. 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 I don't want to have a fearful concept of, of the wrong concept of God. That I'm afraid to stand in front of his naked eye. God's not on the throne this morning. I, I'm trying to trying to get a hold of what. I need to to help us, and then these things just coming to me. But I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned that God's sitting on His throne this morning, and He's going to zap me like a mosquito the first mistake I made. Right. Neither is He going to do you that way. Right. But under His watchful eye, 
He's going to he's going to have help me preach yeah. under his watchful eye and his guiding hand. He knows what he's doing with our lives. Right. Yeah. Then if he knows what he's doing, let's trust him yeah. and worship him. Come on. Come on. Worship him. Right. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus took the cross on him, church. That 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 humanity don't have to be afraid. We can bear our cross. He told us to take up our cross and follow him. But I'm going to tell you, our cross will never be what his cross was. Right. Right. The things that we bear in life will never be. Be what Christ bore in life. The situation that we endure will never be what He endured. And so let's just shoulder our problems, amen, and realize that we're not handling them by our own strength, that we've got somebody standing beside of us, and that He's handling our problems for us. Right. Strengthen the weak and the feeble knees, He said here. Amen. Oh, God. Strengthen the weak in hands and weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Who's doing that? God's doing that. We help one another, but God's helping us today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God's there for us today. He's there for us. Amen. There's fear in our hearts when we think of people. We think of people and and, and, and uh, uh, I'm just talking to you and using some of my experiences. And uh, I, I, I didn't mean any harm by the things that I said Wednesday night. But I've been through situations and felt like I've got blistered up pretty bad. And, 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 and with the Lord's help, I've come through it and, and, and going right on for God. Amen. And... and, and you know, and I realize that some of these people that, that does you harm are just waiting to get a chance to do it again. That's right. But I can't just sit around and never do anything for God because I know I got an enemy somewhere out there lurking in the shadow trying to do something evil against me. I've got to keep on preaching for God. Right. I got to try to keep on Reaching for the lost, yes. you know, and I've been I've been going different places, and and sometimes I haven't been in a while, but but going places and places that one time I would not have went, and if you'd asked me if you ever go amongst those people and preach for them, I went ahead and laughed at you. Absolutely not, amen. But but uh, 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 the Lord opened the door, and and I preach whenever I've got the opportunity. Amen. And, and and let people talk. Let them say things. Amen. I know where I'm standing with God. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Don't you know where you're standing with God? Yes. Amen. We have glory. And we know where we're standing with God. Amen. I'm going to tell you that we finally, we get in a place with the Lord where the gainsayers have nothing to say. Right. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care where we preach. Where we go, amen, what we're doing, we could go into the worldliest church in our community and preach. Amen. And then everybody jump back and say, oh, they went worldly now. Amen. But what can they say, Brother John, when we went there and we reached a soul and when we come back to our sanctuary where we get out, of the, try to get out of the presence of the enemy, try to push back all of our fears, Try to get where we can worship God. And while we're here, the Lord moves on us. And we lay hands on the sick and we see them recover. We lay hands on the people and they're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come here now. Help me preach. And, and, and we can cast out devils. Amen. What does it matter what somebody might say? Well, they go here and they go there. I tell you, you get so fearful. You're afraid to move and do anything for God. I'm going to go ahead and say it. We, I've used this illustration before. We are preaching up Doe Creek. And, and when we had church on Tuesday nights and Sunday afternoons at 2, we had real large crowds because they were coming from the Baptist church and helping us and two Baptist churches. 
from helpfulness and, and from the Church of God and, uh, and, and a lot of, well, from a lot of independent churches were coming. And, and, and at times, you know, 75 would have been a large crowd in that little building, 75. And a lot of times we had over that, and it was, you know, packed house. Well, then I, I felt the burden to start having church rather than 2 o'clock on Sunday mornings at 10, and, and then back there on Sunday nights, and still on Tuesday evenings. Well, on Sunday nights and Sunday mornings, the crowd went down. Sister Minnie was going there then, and uh, and the crowd being down, but it didn't take long to, we was running 35 and 40 in Sunday school, right out there in the country, and have any Sunday school rooms, none at all. And it, in the springtime, I had an old old uh, Ford Econoline van, you couldn't hardly hold a thing between the lines, it was uh, bad about, you know, uh, darting all over the road, and, uh, but we had Sunday school, one Sunday school class than that. And then somebody else had a larger car, like a station wagon. We had Sunday school class than that. Then we had Sunday school class around the corner of the building, set some chairs up. And we had the adult class inside. You know, invited them up the best we could, where everybody wouldn't interfere with everybody. Well, some of the older ones had been coming there for years, they don't want to come to Sunday school. They really didn't want us to have it anyway. And then they come in late for church and already in a huff because we was having Sunday school and the church was growing and, 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 and they were not telling me how. I've leaned on the Lord's direction. And I'm not being critical. I'm just telling you the way it was. And they come in and there they was in the cars and, in, and, and, and outside. And what some people of the community going to think Amen. With everybody all outside rather than in here. And the first thing, I didn't mean to be a smart addict. Usually I don't think of things that quick. But the first thing I thought of to say was if they want to know what's going on, then let them come and see. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just kept on. You can get so fearful of what people think and the direction they want to go with things that you get afraid to mind God. I'm here to tell you we're to mind God first. And then God will back up whatever we're doing. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, back in the winter, out here at Robbinsville, there was a basement wall and it was caving in. And somebody contacted Brother Ricky and he decided, we can fix that. I'm sure that they had worked on it before. But when I saw it, with my limited knowledge and ability, I wouldn't have touched it with a proverbial 10-foot pole. But with their ability and their knowledge, they dug the wall, all the dirt out away from the wall. And, you know, I'm thinking they're going to dig the dirt out away from the wall and get the pressure off of it. They're going to jack this house up. They're going to tear this wall out and relay it. That wasn't what they did. They cut holes all in that concrete wall. It wasn't that block, a block. They cut holes all in it and jabbed big pieces of steel down in there all the way down. All the way down. They built another wall right beside of it out of wood and, and forms and poured all of that full of slushy concrete and put steel down in there and then fixed it and put the wall back. And I'm thinking, hey, I just want to make sure I'm cold. I just don't say I'm sure cold. But the inspector that worked for the mortgage company come out there and watch that. And he got the man's card and he said, if we ever do that again, I run into that again, I will I, 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 be calling you. He liked what he saw. Right. But, you, but you had to, I had to call right. overcome your fears. That's, right. That's what I'm trying to preach on. You've got to overcome. If he ever got the job done, I had to overcome the fear. Right. And if we get the job done for God, we've got to overcome the fear. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 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 the fear of man, Proverbs said, bringeth a snare. We're afraid of opposition. We're not guaranteed immunity from trouble. Trouble's going to come. 
But I'm here to tell you, God moves through attempted and tried people. God works through attempted and tried people. Amen. We've come through it, and God knows we have, and God's using us. We've overcome faith. And we get rid of that timid spirit. We become a courageous people. Daniel would have never went into the den of lions with a timid spirit. But somewhere, brothers, Daniel got a hold of enough of God. He got a hold of enough of God that if he knew that God didn't deliver him from the lions when he went into the den, yeah. that he was still in God's hands anyway. Right. But I believe Daniel knew the next morning he'd still be alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Hebrew boys went so far as to say, if God don't, I'm not bound anyway. They, somewhere along the line, they got old enough of God that they got rid of that timid spirit. Right, yes. I'm going to work for God. Right. Right. Somewhere along the line, I'm going to tell you, you know, I don't understand why people get so fearful, and I'm feeling something from God here right now, of their position in life. Now, when I worked over the departments, I tried, tried my best to do my best I could, and I, and I did better... Pat my own step on the back, wear my arm on Pat my own step. I did but better than anybody they ever had over there. And I'm sure they could find somebody to do a whole lot better, but not for the hours they had to put in. And, and I tried to get along with the people, tried to get along with the lady that was a manager, but she was so fearful of her position that I didn't see it the first time, Sister Kathy, but the second time I could see where she was cutting me down. Um, you know, she 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 see somebody at the parking lot. She said they're out there right now pulling a drug deal. Now if they'd been pulling a drug deal, she'd have known that she'd had the law there, legally split, and I knew it. But that's just her way of, uh, of of trying to make me think those people are not any good, not worth trying to help. And then another old fellow that kind of got friends with and and got you know got talking to him, praying for him, and praying for his son. You know. I went in his bedroom and, and, and uh, looking for bugs, and I saw white powder on his bed. Well, if she thought that that was cocaine, I know her again quick enough. She had the law there lately split. Just, yeah, just split. divide, divide. Why she, because she's fearful of her place in life. Well, when the, that company that we work for began to, you know, that they're going to, that people that own the apartments is just going to get rid of them. And she wanted to keep her job. But she knew that with them there, and they started questioning me why this wasn't done and why that wasn't done, she knew I wasn't going to lie for her or me or nobody else. I was going to tell them that she wouldn't let me and they wouldn't spend the money. And so what she do? She wanted me out of there. And that's exactly what she got. Fearful of her position in life. But it didn't help her none. She lost her place too. My point is, if we get fearful of our position in life, we'll not only we'll not only cause somebody else to stumble, you'll lose your place too. Right. Do we have to get so afraid somebody else is going to do something, somebody else is going to rise up that we get so afraid? I'm preaching to somebody here today. Come on, we're so afraid somebody else is going to rise up. We thought they were out of the way, but here. Then they're right back in the, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you remember Haman and Mordecai? Haman could not stand Mordecai because Mordecai would not bow down to him. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to get rid of him. I'm going to get rid of Mordecai. And he starts plotting a way to get rid of Mordecai. And he builds a gallows for Mordecai to be hanged on. And he wounds up hanged on the same gallows that he built for the other man. He had been fearful of his position in life. God, would you help me preach here this morning? Amen. Jealousy will destroy you. Jealousy 
Amen. Amen. Fear and jealousy runs together. It will destroy you. Can we not see what's happened to other people in the past? And we're not going to let it happen to us. Somebody help me preach here today. Amen. Whenever I say that, I remember I preached at a place one time as a camp meeting, preached the morning service. And it was a little hot. A little hard to preach. Harder than it should have been. Yes. And I said, come on, you folks, help me preach. Oh, God. Amen. And then the evening speaker got up and he let us know that you weren't supposed to do that. Well, I had news for him. I've heard camp meeting preachers that's a whole lot well more well known than him that ask people to help him preach every now and then. And I wasn't even a camp meeting preacher. Never have been. Never even, not even on my mind. I was just preaching the morning service that time. Amen. Somebody helping me here? Come on. Amen. What I'm going to do is that we want you to get together. Right. Right. Yes. right. That's right. I'm going to say somebody help me preach and we want us to get together yes. and go the same direction with it. We need to get to where we've got, not just need to. It's imperative, it's a must that we get past this fear in our life, our fear of our position, fear of God, fear of man. It's right to fear God, but when we fear God, let us, let us do it to where it's a respect of God and not just afraid to move in the presence of God. Right. right. Yes. Precious God. Precious fear about God. Fear about temporal concerns. Yes, Lord, help us. Fear about our spiritual concerns. Yes, Lord, help us, God. Fear about our loved ones. The whole heart of the gospel is peace this morning. I'm not going to hold this my soul. The whole problem with fear is unbelief. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's the whole problem with fear. We're not stable enough that we believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And that we're so afraid of everything in life that we can't make the proper move for anything. Because we're afraid. We're help, us God, help us God. Help us God. Help us God. Precious God. And God's Precious called God. you. Yes, God. And He's going to establish you. Yes. But to be able to have overcome this fear, we've got to have peace. Yes. Yes, Lord. I feel like I'm out here all by myself this morning. But you've got to have peace. Yes. You know, when I come in from work of a night that I uh, of a night then, then I, I don't want I, I don't want any hassle. Does anybody else live here? Well I, I don't want a, a hassle up I, I you know we we, we, we we went through things all day long. And and so we come home and we want to rest, don't we? Hallelujah. Want peace at home, and then when we got peace in our heart, we have peace at work too. Come on, peace, peace overcomes that fear, and you've got that peace when you pray through on a regular basis. You're still praying for revival. Yes, Sister Kathy said a few minutes ago, we've had two weeks of revival. No, we've had two weeks of, of getting started, just like she said, yes. in the revival services that we intend to continue. Right. Right. Yes. And I don't mean this harsh. Well, John, I'm not one of those pastors that think we ought to have revival every two weeks. I don't only think we ought to have revival services bringing in evangelists every month. Unless it's the will of God, we shouldn't have to bring one in every quarter. Now, I don't see anything wrong with having a revival every month and bringing the evangelism in if God's will's in it. Yes. But if it's just to keep us pumped up, right. then we're, at the wrong, we're doing the wrong thing. Right. Hallelujah. Right. We've got to have more than man religion. That's right. I remember one time going to a church 
we went to a lot of different churches back when we were younger before I started going to Church of God and getting settled down. Understand what Sunday school was, understand what Sunday morning service was, understood what getting established in the church was, understood what getting my position in the church meant. And then when I got my position, I didn't need to be afraid of it. But before I go 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 to, to that, the other, let me get back to this. And I was going to the church of God and uh, and uh, preaching on Wednesday nights and sharing Wednesday nights with another preacher. And the other preacher was jealous of my friendship with the pastor. Yes. And I didn't get to spend much time with him. I just got to work every day. Right. The only time I got to be with him was in church. And I lived in one county and they lived in the other. And the other fellow, he was retired and the pastor didn't have a full-time job. There was no reason they couldn't spend time together. Yet he was jealous of my Friendship with the pastor. And I got up to preach one night. And if I could preach a third of anything that I could, even this morning, and I'm not really getting a hold of it the way I want to, but I feel things coming to me. But if I could even preach a third then, but I couldn't, I just got up and made an effort. And I preached on this, and preached on this, and preached on this, and preached on this. Finally wound up about 20 minutes worth of preaching on about everything. And the fellow got mad and he said, Brother Sparks preached right on my sermon that I've been studying on for two weeks and I don't think I'll ever preach again, especially here, as long as he's there. Well, I'm sorry he got mad and quit and then I got every Wednesday night. <laughs> Amen. He lost his place because of fearful of his fear of his position, jealousy. He lost his place and I wound up with him. I need all the practice I could get. Amen. Like Irvin Wicker here one morning. Well, Sunday morning, I said, buddy, I'm glad you come. And I said, because I needed a little practice. I need somebody to practice on. He said, from the looks of you, you need all you can get. <laughs> Amen. Because you're not going to get too much on Irving anyway. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But 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 uh, uh, back back uh, to a few minutes ago, I, I, I went to a church, and I went to listen to a fellow preach, and he didn't preach. Somebody else preached. It wasn't who I wanted to hear. It wasn't who I drove all that distance to hear. And I sat, sat there and sulked and pouted the entire service. Everybody else shouted glory, hallelujah to the message. Everybody else got in and prayed around the altar and had a great time. But I just sat there and never had a good time because it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to turn out. I'm telling you, church, amen. We need to overcome some things. Get past some things. What I want to do today is to worship the Lord. I want to see the glory of God fall in this service. Amen. Hallelujah. But I know Brother Mitchell enough, amen, that when we come to the house of God tonight, he's going to come prepared to preach. But if the Spirit moves and he don't, then he's not going to be sideways at us. Come on. Amen. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I was praying that the Lord would move that I wouldn't have to this morning. Amen. Because I wanted you to get help. Amen. And I was fearful, I guess, that I wouldn't be able to get through to what you needed. And Lord, if you just pour it out of heaven on them, amen, then they're going to get it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. But I'm here to tell us we need a move of God. It's imperative that we have a move of God every service. Every service. Every service. But the cure for fear is faith. If we've got faith, then we're going to have trust in God, and trust in God's going to bring peace. When we got peace in our souls, then the power of God is going to be manifested through these mortal bodies and through these hands. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. God, give it to the preacher. God, give it to the preacher. God, give it to the pulpit, so to speak. Why don't we pray that God give it to you? Amen. Oh. Try it. Yes. Why don't
moment you make the necessary adjustments in your life, that God will give it to you. I won't be jealous if God uses you and you lay hands on the sick and you recover. I won't do you like a preacher down another prayer. I start calling names, but I won't. And then everybody knows we're talking about. Then another preacher in his church. One morning the service got all fired up. This young preacher there in the church got fired up. And the Lord started using him. And he knew that the Lord was on him and the Holy Ghost was on him, Brother Mitchell. And so he just kept on going. And he kept on going until the Holy Ghost zeroed him right in on a lost man yeah. sitting in the church. Yeah. Well, if the Holy Ghost is on him and he zeroed in on the lost man sitting in the church, he didn't need anybody to tell him whether or not he could make an altar service. Right. He didn't need to be petting nobody's ego. What he needed right there was to mind God. Right. And so the young preacher did that. He minded God. And he made the altar service. And the young man came and prayed. Yeah. Came to the altar and he prayed. Mm -hmm. And the pastor got mad at him because he didn't get the credit. He didn't get to be the one to preach to the man. He didn't get to be the one. He wasn't in the spotlight. It was somebody else. Hey Amen. Nothing but fear. I'm here to tell you. Come on. Fear. That's fear. That's foolishness. That ain't the will of God for us. We don't want that stuff, do we? Come on. Oh, glory to God. It's not in our, that's not even in our minds, is it? Hey, Amen. It's what's in our minds is we want a move of the Holy Ghost that will move and touch every individual's life. Right. Stand with me this morning. You want the power? Faith. Faith in God brings peace. That God is in control of everything. The peace that passes all understanding.